Don't take God's grace for granted or you'll soon forget God. Remember and give thanks to God always. It was true in Jesus' time and it's true now. Praising and thanking Jesus must always come first. I've been asked to give a title to my sermons, so I'm, I'm calling this one Groaning, Grace, and Gratitude. And the reason I picked that, I was, um, I'm going to be talking about the gospel reading, but, but I was thinking about the reading from Deuteronomy and the Israelites in their wilderness wanderings. And it seemed quite relevant to me. We're in a bit of a, a desert ourselves right now. And I hear considerable groaning, but I hear positive things as well. But I'm, I'm involved in this study with um, the diocese on a book by N.T. Wright called God and the Pandemic. We do it on Zoom, and we have our small groups in Zoom. And um, I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have some very wise people in my group. Um, somebody remarked the other night when looking for God in the pandemic, um, God is in the now, always has been, always will be. God is in the now. Grace is in the now. Those were their comments. And I would extend that to say gratitude must be in the now. And so we're going to look at our reading now. Jesus is traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem when he encounters a group of lepers. And they shout to him from a distance, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They're crying out to him for mercy. And Jesus responds. He shows them mercy. He tells them to go show themselves to the priests. And while they're on their way, they realize they've been healed. When they did realize this, one of the ten returns to thank Jesus. Now, <laughs> when I thought about this, over the week, I don't know um, if Luke is making some kind of a point here, but one out of ten, the numbers are startling, if you think about it. And nine out of ten not coming back is even more startling. But I don't know if, if that was Luke's intention. Anyway, Jesus was surprised that only one came back. And he was also surprised that the one who came back was a Samaritan. And he, made, he, he pointed this out to those around him. Probably for the reason that the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. The Samaritans, after the kingdom divided, after the death of Solomon, set up their own temple had their own worship, they became a mixed race, uh, their religion was mixed, and the Jews saw them as impure, and they looked down on them. They were partly Jewish, but they were compromised, I guess you would say, in their eyes. But Jesus wondered, or was surprised, that those who looked down on them, his own Jewish brothers, didn't come back to thank him for this really miraculous healing. Leprosy is a miserable illness. It those who are afflicted with it are isolated from their families. 
Um, they have no hope of a normal life, and in Jesus' time, no hope of a cure. So this was a miraculous and most certainly a chance for a new life. Another thing Luke says here, and it, it, it will fit in as I go along, when Jesus makes this particular journey to Galilee, one that he's made several times, he doesn't go directly through Samaria this time. It's a shorter route, but he hasn't always felt welcome there. And in fact, on one occasion, he was denied hospitality completely. And it's a long journey. Even the short route is at least three days. So Jesus, on this particular journey, crosses the Jordan to the east, turns south, and travels along the border. I think Jesus had enough on his mind without facing any more hostility. You see, when Luke tells us that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem this time, he's also telling us that Jesus is on his way to his crucifixion. This is his last trip into Jerusalem. So when he nears the village on the border and these lepers cry out, um, he points out that one is a Samaritan, so presumably the others are Jews, and he tells them to go show themselves to the priest, and on their way they're healed. The Samaritan is completely overwhelmed with praise. He comes back and throws himself at Jesus' feet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's just bursting with praise. And this is an appropriate response but it comes from where Jesus least expects it. Where are the other nine? Did they see themselves as God's chosen and therefore entitled to be healed? Did they take their healing for granted? Was the Samaritan just tagging along with no expectation that he would receive anything, but he had a hope that he might be included? And when he is healed, he rejoices. It could be that the other nine were eager to obey Jesus' instruction, and so they go off and show themselves to the priest. The priests, after all, were the physicians of the day, and they would confirm the healing, allowing them to go back to a normal life. And that was important, but it was not more important than thanking the healer. We can't downplay the miraculous mercy and grace of this event. It was huge. Jesus has his mind on what awaits him in Jerusalem, yet he does not ignore a cry for mercy. And as excited as the nine are to get on with life, they're very close to taking God's grace and mercy for granted. Jesus was surprised that they didn't return to thank him, and we should be too. God warned the Israelites, as we read this morning, through Moses, that they were not to take his grace for granted. Don't, this is my paraphrase, don't take God's grace for granted, or you'll soon forget God. Remember and give thanks to God always. It was true in Jesus' time, and it's true now. Praising and thanking Jesus must always come first. Now we know that Jesus in his earthly life revealed the heart of the Father, and we see that here in this healing. When the lepers cry out, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus responds. Jesus always responds to a cry for mercy. God always hears a cry for mercy. We hear it throughout the Psalms. 
I cried for mercy and you heard me. That's who God is. It's his character to show mercy. It's not something he decides to do if he feels like doing it. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. He does it because he loves us. And Jesus, even as he makes his way to Jerusalem and to the cross, does not ignore a cry for mercy. He doesn't discriminate, and he doesn't ask for anything in return. So when the Samaritan returns to thank Jesus and to worship him, Jesus says, rise and go, your faith has made you well. I believe at that moment, the Samaritan received not just healing from his leprosy, but a deep healing in his soul that restored him, not just to his family, but it gave him a new relationship, a new friendship with Jesus. He's given a new life beyond the physical. So when we look at this, where do we see ourselves? The one out of 10, the nine out of 10, Sadly, I can often too easily find myself in the group of nine, going along, caught up in my own willful agenda. I need the, the, the uh, discipline of taking time every day to look back on my day and say thank you for the blessings, for what has given me joy, for correction, and for forgiveness. I need to do that, because if I don't, I soon forget. And I don't, I'm, I'm committed to the discipline, but I won't say that I do it every single day, but certainly I try to find the time every day, because otherwise I forget how blessed I am. When we celebrate Eucharist today, as we will, we remember the mercy, the healing, forgiveness, new life, infinite love and grace that we received when Jesus died on the cross. And it is a celebration the Eucharist. It means thanksgiving. We celebrate with hearts filled with praise. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>